Hey, how you doing? Daniel Ruiz Tyson, The Writer's Life. Coming to you Friday evening on what has been a cold for August uh, day, a wet and miserable day in South London. Thankfully, the weather meant to be picking up over the next few days. Now, a few videos ago, I mentioned to you that like most writers or many writers, uh, to sustain the writing career um, as I wait for the next big deal to come along over the years, I've had to dip in and out of uh, the nine to five world, a world that quite frankly has terrified me for uh, most of my adult life, if not all of my adult life. I think it's a fear that maybe stems from being a Saturday boy at Woolworths because I found retail really tough, you know, physically tough. I would never go back into retail and uh, I really didn't like my manager uh, back then. <clears throat> and uh, so I think that fear, that night before going into a job fear has never quite left me. It's something I have to conquer. Thankfully these days it's uh, less of an issue having to step into that world. I'm sure maybe I'll have to do it again um, but, uh, you know, whenever I can, I come back out of that world and just focus uh, full time on the writing. Um, so I've probably done a couple of hundred first days. And I think, you know, being a shy guy, being an introvert, I think the one positive about that, about doing contract work, is it instills in you a confidence that uh, was hitherto missing. You know, I'm used to being the new guy and it's not a problem for me. I know how long it can take me to get to know people um, if I'm in that world or in any situation, really. And um, it's probably two to three months, really, maybe longer than most people. But I'm just not someone who likes over familiarity. I do like to take my time getting to know people. So looking back at those first days and I've got some prompts here because I'm going to go through 10 first days that uh, stayed in the memory for all the wrong reasons and you might think well this guy's been unlucky but I'm saying to you look there's been a couple of hundred first days so really 10 out of 200 it's not a great deal to be honest um, but these are just first days where maybe odd things have uh, happened and uh, of course it begins with uh, Woolworths 15 years old started there at the old Clapham Clapham Junction store. It's now a Waitrose. Uh, just turned 15 the week before. My confidence had already been knocked because I'd overheard my dad um, telling my mum when she told him that I was, uh, that I'd got a Saturday job. He, he told her I wouldn't last a year. And I think that was the only reason I lasted three and a half years because I was absolutely useless at that job. I had a big accident in there that saw me getting covered completely in paint on New Year's Eve 1988. Uh, the only time my mum's had to cut my hair because I needed to go out in the evening and by the time I got home all the barbershops were closed. So, you know, my, my, the paint had seeped through my clothes. It was a warehouse accident. So, um, you know, I'm just a clumsy guy. I, I always have been. But uh, my first day at Woolworths uh, was a Saturday. And in the afternoon, you know, and they, you know, there were lots of girls there. And I was going to a, you know, Catholic all-boys school at the time. So to be back in an environment where uh, there were girls around as well, I was finding that, uh, you know, being quiet, being shy, uh, I was finding that a little difficult. And uh, what better way to introduce yourself to new colleagues than to get stuck in the lift on your first day? I was in that lift, a really old lift, uh, for about half an hour. Felt longer, but I don't think it was longer than half an hour. Um, I'd been allocated to the gardening department where I was uh, working under a woman who at the time had been there for about 25 years. She was due to retire the following year. Betty, she used to call me Herbert and I was her uh, her little apprentice, which basically meant lifting everything. And uh, so I was taking the plants up. So I was stuck in a trolley, sorry, I was stuck in a lift with a trolley full of plants. And I've never had a garden. I had no idea what I was doing. You know, when I had to water the plants, I would just turn on the hose full blast and just you know, have fun with the hose. So that was uh, Woolworths. And uh, I think, I remember it was another Saturday boy um, who helped to get me out of their opening, prizing the lift open. And uh, they were telling me not to panic. I was just, you know, I think it was the trolley full of plants 
that it was causing me more difficulty than being stuck in the lift. Let's have a look at my list. The second uh, first day, I went to work in a paint shop in uh, August 1990 after I reluctantly left uh, Woolworths. I thought the time was right for me to go. I just uh, was having trouble with that manager. He, the guy just made me paranoid. Um, and uh, I had a friend who worked at this uh, paint shop and uh, he told me what I should go in and ask for salary wise. I think I went in there, I asked for five pounds an hour. Uh, the woman, the mother of a well-known celebrity, she, uh, the mother has passed away now, uh, didn't particularly like her. Uh, I said five pounds an hour, she said two pounds fifty. I said done. I, I, you know, I was old enough to be able to negotiate a better rate. Anyway, um, one of my tasks right from the first day was to pull the shutter down with this long stick. You had to hook it into the shutter. And I struggled with that for about uh, two months. And as I say, it always takes me two to three months to get to know people. And that place was no different. And apparently once I got to know them, they, they, you know, they told me that every night, the reason they would send me out to do the shutter was because they realized I couldn't do it and they found it really funny. So while I was outside, they were inside sniggering. So that's that one. Let's have a look at the third one. This is a really strange one. Um, even now in middle age, this is something I would never have done. Uh, first day in the worst job I ever had, uh, security guard uh, one summer in Canary Wharf as it was being built. Uh, I turn up at 6.30 in the morning, brutal 12-hour shifts, and it was a hot summer that year, 91. And uh, suddenly I get sent to go into the underground car park in Cabot Square where there is a, a, a man, apparently a repeat offender, back in the car park um, touching himself. You know what I'm saying here. Uh, I'm not going to use the word because I don't want to have to stick an adult uh, rating on this video. Touching himself and his thing was doing it in front of the camera. That's how he, you know, that was how he got off. I'm a kid. Um, I think I'd been, I'd, I'd started shaving by then. I'm a kid. It's my first day in a security job that I was not cut out for. And um, yeah, they sent me to try and stop this guy along with a few other guards. I made sure um, that I didn't make it into that underground car park. And I think I immediately lost the trust of my um, fellow guards. But uh, even now, you know, what, what am I going to do? Uh, you know, how do you apprehend this guy? What if he's actually finishing himself off? You know, I'm going to, what, get something over a particular material over my uniform and then I'm going to do a 12-hour shift in those in that stained uniform? It was never going to happen. Uh, and I have to say I was shocked. Even now, to be told to do something like that would shock me. Uh, next on the list, uh, this is working for a well-known shipping company, I think. I think they did luxury cruises. First day uh, contractor, I think this is in the 90s, turned up on my first day, went through the wrong door in the morning, fire alarm went off, a uh, couple of hundred staff had to uh, leave the building um, and stand outside. I think they were based in New Oxford Street. So again, uh, not the ideal way to introduce yourself to uh, new colleagues. Um, Fast forward in a few years, uh, working for a startup uh, business. First morning being trained by a, a woman somewhat older than me. And uh, she's showing me the ropes and then she starts weeping and I didn't have a clue what was going on. And uh, later on, I was pulled up by uh, my manager, uh, my new manager, who told me that uh, the woman had just lost her mum. And that was the uh, South London uh, police you just heard there. So, uh, you know, understandable. Uh, the woman had probably returned to work before she was ready. Um, we turned out to get on really well, that woman and I. And, um, you know, that was quite a first meeting. OK, I think moving on to my second post-it note. Uh, OK, this was working for my cousin's uh, doomed travel agency in uh, Surrey. Uh, the only reason I, I took it was because I figured it'd be more fun working uh, with, you know, uh, family rather than uh, turning up uh, for an office job that I didn't like. So I stepped out of the office job. I negotiated myself uh, a fairly decent rate with my uh, cousin. And uh, it was a long journey every morning. Um, my other cousin would drive us there. I think it was about an hour on the road. Turned up, uh, needed to take a leak, went into the loo, closed the door, locked the door, getting ready to take the leak. And suddenly, 
I discover that there is another door and at that very moment a woman from a business next door came in so there was me and a completely strange woman in a toilet cubicle um, I don't know what she thought I was going to do in terms of did she think I was going to vacate I mean um, you know I was there first basically but it was at that moment that I knew that my cousin's business was not going to succeed. You, you know, has there ever been a business in the history of this planet that has ever succeeded when its sole toilet has had two doors for two separate businesses? You did not have, you had to be really quick to get in there, shut one door, lock it, and then close the other door. I mean, you had to be really, really fast. Um, yeah, at that moment, I thought, yeah, this job is not going to last for long. And sure enough, I was out of there by the end of the summer. I don't think I sold many holidays either. Still get stick about that from my uh, cousin. Uh, the next one, uh, my I think it was my one and only day painting and decorating. I'm not a bad painter. You know, I can't do the skirting boards and all that. My hand's not steady enough. Here comes another police car. This reminds me of my podcast in days. It's gone now. Oh, it's going. Um, this was actually this was actually painting my sister's old school, their main hall, um, working with a friend uh, for the day, and it was a kind of domed hall, and we had to go up this tower, and I've never had a head for heights, despite the dream flying. Um, in real life, I've just not had a head for heights, and um, I was struggling. You know, once we started pulling the tower into the middle of the hall because we'd done the sides, uh, the walls at the sides, and it was simply, we're going up this to paint the ceiling. Um, I could get up to the top, but I could not stand up on that tower. The vertigo was just overwhelming me. And uh, my poor friend, uh, he still paid me at the end of the day, cash in hand, but um, he had to do most of the ceiling. And there were other... Uh, painters and decorators who turned up in time to see the vertigo uh, kicking in, uh, which they found very amusing. Uh, okay, wrapping up very quickly. Uh, my sole day doing a paper round uh, covering uh, for my friend Lopez. His dad had passed away. His uh, brother, my friend too, had a paper round at the time. They were going to bury their dad in the uh, in the Canaries. So I said, yeah, I'll take the paper round. You know, I'll help out. I think I was being paid to. Uh, I was told you just got to do these streets. Here's the shopping trolley. You stick the papers in the shopping trolley. I had no idea how difficult the paper round was. And uh, my cousin helped me. Uh, the amount of dogs that rushed to uh, the front door as we were stuffing the papers through the letterbox, you know, gave me an idea of what postmen have to deal with. But also, it was just that, you know, I thought it would be a pretty straightforward job. It wasn't. I think we dumped some of the papers um, locally. Um, I think it might have been the local guardian. And we were doing the back streets in Clapham. And, uh, yeah, I mean, whoever did a paper round, especially in winter, you know, uh, full respect because it's not uh, by no means an easy job. The final one, there's no particular incident here. It was, again, and all of these incidents are very old. But uh, I think this one might have been around the time of the um, the office had just come out. And I could not believe that despite the office and the widespread acclaim that show had got, that there would still be David Brents out there. And uh, this was working for a large uh, public sector body. And I knew I was in trouble right from the moment I met the boss. He had... Uh, his waistcoat, his cufflinks, and his socks were all matching. And I thought, yeah, this guy's going to be a problem. This guy is going to be difficult. I'm not going to get on with this guy. Uh, first morning, he came in to see me, uh, turned the chair around, did that thing, you know, like a, some police detective about to grill me, where uh, he's leaning into the front of the chair. He's got his arms over the back of the chair. And I'm thinking, just sit on the chair properly. You don't need to do that. Uh, there was another time where I saw him sitting on the desk and putting his feet on the chair like, look how, look how laid back I am. You know, who wouldn't want a boss like this? Um, I think I lasted less than two weeks there. Once word got to me that this guy wasn't uh, trusting me and wanted me to share his office, uh, apart from the fact I don't like being in a, a closed space, I just thought I'm not going to do the closed space thing with this kind of guy. You know, guy every day is coming in with... Um, 
you know, matching socks, cufflinks, waistcoat. He's probably got all his outfits lined up on a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's not my kind of guy. So that's it. Uh, those are my first day experiences that stayed, you know, stayed with me for the wrong reasons. Uh, I'm hoping there won't be too many more first days as I try to, um, you know, get this career back to where it needs to be and should be and this time stay there. Um, please subscribe. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and share it. And I uh, hope you have a nice evening, whatever you're doing. It's probably, chances are you're probably doing more than I am. I'm doing this. And um, enjoy your evening. I think I've just said that. And uh, I'll catch up with you probably over the weekend. Take care.